So we've got a lot of questions and inquiries about our preseason rankings. Before the LCS kicked off, we ranked 1 to 10 in NA in EU, what we thought the standings would look like come the end of the regular season. And now that we're hitting the midway point of the LCS with week five behind us, I think it's time to revisit those preseason predictions. So let's start off in EU. Spoilers, by the way, a lot of them are very wrong. They're very wrong, but there's a couple weeks for them to sort themselves out. Uh, so let's just go through. On the left here, you've got the preseason predictions that we kind of picked out. And on the right, you've got the actual standings for the LCS after week five. So let's start on the left-hand side there with our predictions. Had Fnatic number one uh, coming in to the regular season. And right now, I mean, after that week, last week, that's not looking that bad. Uh, Fnatic tied for first with G2 and Vitality, so okay. Uh, G2 coming in at the second spot, and again, they're part of that three-way tie for first. And uh, outside of that is when it starts getting a little bit messy. Uh, number three, we had Misfits. I mean, this is a team, got to the quarterfinals at Worlds, only swapped a couple of players, but right now Senkux, Senkux looks like a big downgrade from PoE, especially with how he's performing in NA. So right now, Misfits are sitting in a tie for fifth uh, at five and five. And I mean, that might even be a little better than they've actually been performing in recent weeks. They started out well, but have definitely been slumping since. Uh, we had Shulka at number four. Obviously, that looks a little bad right now, considering they're in eight. They hold eighth possession. They're in sole possession of eighth place at four and six after an 0 and two week, and they have been all kinds of inconsistent and haven't been able to beat any of the top teams uh, in EU. I think they're still going to be a playoff team. Maybe they'll be better in a best of series, but I mean, fourth, fourth is a bit of a stretch at the moment. Uh, Splice, wrap it up, boys. Fifth place. Got it right. Wow. Five and five right now, Splice. Uh, I think they're probably the best performing team right now out of all those five and five squads. Uh, definitely looking like they're going to be a playoff team. Can they get above that spot? I mean, maybe they could get into fourth. Uh, I don't see them sliding into that top three spot. They'll probably finish somewhere around fourth or fifth. Uh, <laughs> number six, H2K getting that final playoff spot. And let me tell you, after last week, maybe... Maybe with Shook and Selfie in that lineup, I mean, there's not huge powerhouses right now fighting over those final spots. Again, I think Giants are coming down, are going to slide down out of that fourth spot. Uh, so I think maybe there's a chance for H2K. Obviously, they have a long way to go. But I mean, if we did this before week five, that looks like completely ridiculous. And wow, we have a wrong. I still don't know if H2K will be able to make the playoffs, but they do look... A lot better. I thought Santorin would be great on this new squad. He was looking good in the challenger scene. Uh, even in the his last times in the LCS after TSM, he didn't look that bad. But uh, yeah, H2K didn't feel that way. Okay, number seven, Vitality. Had them just outside of the playoffs. Obviously, they burst onto the scene, won seven of their first eight games. Uh, last week, they had their first big test, their first big adversity. They go 0-2 to G2 and H2K. Uh, I think seventh, I don't think Vitality's fallen down that far. I think they're gonna hang around that top three spot. So uh, we're wrong there. I definitely, I didn't see uh, Jazuki particularly performing as well as he has. I thought many true packs could maybe be a rookie of the split candidate, which by the way, he is the front runner for that award right now. But I did not see Jazuki performing this well. I didn't see Cabochard performing uh, back to the levels that we saw him at before. I mean, last split, he definitely had a down year on Vitality, but he looks a lot better. So Vitality seventh, nah, that's, that's gonna be wrong. That's gonna be wrong. Uh, Unicorns of Love at eighth, I thought, a lot of people maybe thought eighth was a little low for them. Turns out it was too high. They're coming in. They're at 10th right now. I don't know if they're going to be able to get out of that spot with this new H2K lineup. I mean, yeah, Exile looks a lot better and has been performing a lot better. But to go up a couple of spots, who are they going to pass? Maybe Giants or Rocket start plummeting down the standings. But I don't see Unicorns getting out of that 10th spot. So eighth, yeah, you're a little off. Uh, Rocket down at number nine. 
They've definitely looked a lot better than a ninth place team uh, so far this split. On paper, I mean, that looked like a somewhat underwhelming lineup for sure. I mean, you had some pieces from NIP who obviously got relegated from the LCS last split. Uh, but I mean, Profit's been performing super well for them. Memento, he has a good game, they win. He has a terrible game, they lose. So it, a lot of their win losses are riding on how good a performance he has. Uh, will they go down to ninth? Maybe. I think they'll finish higher than uh, we initially projected on these predictions. At number 10, Giants Gaming. I mean, on paper, that roster did not look very good, but... I mean, they got some wins against some big teams early on, G2. Uh, they performed super well in the late game. Betsy and Steelback really showed that they could be main carry threats on that squad. And um, Ruin, the only remaining member from that challenger squad, was lighting it up in the first couple of weeks. But I definitely think Giants are going to be coming back down to earth. They're already starting to. They lost four of five. Maybe they don't finish 10th. Uh, I think they'll finish a little higher than that, but I still don't see them uh, making playoffs. All in all, I mean, the top half looks okay. G2 and uh, Fnatic in those top three spots. Outside of that, yeah, it's a little wishy-washy. Not, not, that, not that great. Obviously, Vitality is the big one where did not expect those rookies to be performing as well as they did. I thought the H2K guys... I thought Cadrill and Sheriff would actually perform a little better than them, but that was incorrect. Although Sheriff doesn't look that bad, but uh, Vitality, the main thing that we definitely got wrong and did not expect them to perform that well. But again, these standings could completely change uh, in the final weeks of the EU LCS. Um, that's EU. I know the NA predictions are what uh, people were really interested in seeing, so... Obviously, they're going to be a lot different. There was a lot of hype for TSM. We hyped up TSM. Pretty much everyone hyped up TSM, and they're not doing so hot. So, obviously, that's going to reflect on these standings. So, let's jump to these NA preseason predictions. Again, preseason predictions on the left, current standings after week five in the LCS on the right. We, along with pretty much anyone else who watched the LCS, had TSM in that number one spot. Obviously, they're all the way down at six on a borderline playoff spot tied with FlyQuest. We thought it might take a little bit for them to develop synergy, of course, with three new guys coming into this lineup. There's still four weeks left. No, I don't think TSM is going to finish in that top spot. I think they probably finish around that top four area, and then they're going to still be a scary team in the playoffs. But it took a lot longer. It's taking a lot longer for this team to gel together than uh, I know I anticipated. Uh, number two, we had Liquid, who, I mean, up until this week had been top three for the majority of the split, but there's, there's a lot more question marks than we initially thought. Obviously, they burst onto the scene by crushing TSM to open up the split. Um, but I mean, I mean, a lot of these guys already have their inherent synergy with formal, former CLG, former Immortal guys. So it made sense that they had a pretty solid start, but the last couple of weeks, again, they dropped three of their last four. They're losing the Golden Guardians. There's a lot of question marks here. I don't know if they'll get back into that top three right away. I feel like they'll have a rebound week uh, next week. Uh, this is still going to be a top team heading into playoffs. Probably not second, though, just because Echo Fox and Cloud9 are seem to be so far ahead of the rest of the pack. Uh, speaking of Cloud9, we had them in that number three spot. I thought Sven Skarin uh, wouldn't be... A huge downgrade from contracts. I thought Rick Licorice would perform pretty well. Not nearly the level he's been performing at. I mean, he's the rookie of the split award is already done. Lock it up. Give it to him right now. I don't know what the actual award is. Probably something weird. Give him a bag of Licorice. But uh, he has been performing out of his mind. So and that's one of the main reasons Cloud9 is sitting at 8-2. and two. People were saying they lost the offseason. Doesn't look like it right now, although they can't. Beat Echo Fox in best of ones, at least. Uh, we were riding high on Clutch Gaming coming into this season with that the good core of Envy as well as Febivin. I think Febivin is a huge upgrade over Niski, and you can, I mean, based on his performance in EU, Febivin is definitely an upgrade. And uh, we thought Solo was at worst a side grade to Seraph. Well, right now he looks like a huge upgrade. He's another rookie top laner who's been definitely outperforming expectations. Um, right now in the standings, Clutch, 
are, I mean, they're tied for third, which is basically fourth. So, I mean, they're performing like a pretty solid playoff team. Four wins in a row for them. So they've been looking uh, very solid. Uh, CLG in at number five. A lot of people thought that that was much too low for CLG because they got probably me definitely mechanical upgrades in the jungle, rain over, over Omar God, and probably Biofrost over Aphromu, but so far it has just not clicked for that squad. They're in eighth place, eight ninth with Optic, and in a lot of these losses, they have looked lost and not knowing what to do. The only feather in their cap so far this season is giving Echo Fox their only loss on the split. But right now, if they don't do some serious improvements, they are not gonna make the playoffs. CLG not making the playoffs seems kind of insane, but I, I think they'll still get into that spot, but they're gonna be a lower tier team in the playoffs mostly. Uh, obviously this one, number six was our most incorrect. Uh, we did have Echo Fox making the playoffs in that final spot in that sixth seed. Obviously they have blown those expectations out of the water. I mean, we knew this team had a pretty high ceiling just because there's so much talent on that roster. We knew Dardock and Huni had the potential to be the best top lane jungle duo in the league. Well, they are definitely uh, that. Alltech and Adrian, again, super solid bot lane. Thought they'd compete with the best and never really lose in lane, which has been the case. What I really did not expect was Phoenix being so dominant. He's been one of the most dominant mid laners in lane. And I mean, he's played a wide range of different champions already and looked really solid on them all outside of just that Azir, which everyone knows he's great on. So Phoenix has just surpassed expectations by a mile. And with that, Echo Fox is sitting at nine and one. I think there's a pretty solid chance, especially with that 2-0 tiebreaker over Cloud9. They're probably gonna finish first in the regular season. We'll see what this team can do in a best of series though. Uh, 100 Thieves had just on the outside uh, of the playoffs. They're currently sitting in fifth. Uh, but again, they have looked questionable as well. They've also, they had a three game losing streak just snapped in a fiesta against CLG. Uh, I don't have a ton of confidence in 100 Thieves. I don't know if they can hold on to a playoff spot. I think they probably will end up finishing just around that seventh spot, just outside of the playoffs. Um, again, another team that had a pretty solid start. They went three and one, but uh, it's just another case of that late game when you gotta make the decisions, when all the pressure's on, what objective do you go for? What kind of fights do you look for? They don't seem to be on the same page or know what the right call is. Uh, number eight, FlyQuest. I think they've slightly overperformed what I kind of expected them coming into this season. Uh, Onda's looked pretty solid, definitely better than Shrimp did when he came in for that one week. Uh, Fly is looking like who they're gonna go for going forward. Again, start stunt, stop playing JJ. The team looks much better with stunt. And Wild Turtle has had a pretty solid season, uh, as well as Flame looked pretty decent. They have a legitimate shot at making playoffs, I think, sneaking into that final sixth spot. But I mean, there's a lot of solid teams in NA and there's gonna be at least a couple that are missing out on playoffs. And I think FlyQuest might be one of those guys that are just on the outside looking in. Uh, look at these bottom two, Optic. Um, again, another squad that's, believe it or not, actually been better than I thought they would. Uh, PoE has been fantastic for that squad. Uh, Zig and Lemon Nation continue to kind of just die probably when they shouldn't. But uh, I mean, we had them ninth. They're tied with CLG for eighth, ninth. Uh, can they get out of that spot? Maybe they move up to seventh. Um, I, I don't see them making playoffs. It's just kind of, it's such an odd mismatch, mishmash of a roster uh, that just seemed like it was put together last minute, even though a lot of their players were some of the first that were announced. Um, I just don't know if there's enough talent, frankly, on that roster to compete with some of these other squads. So I, I feel like they're hanging around the bottom three. Bottom three, whoo, good voice crack. Bottom three for the rest of the season. Golden Guardians, number 10. Listen, a couple of weeks ago, it looked much worse for this squad. But I was sitting at two and eight. Uh, they got wins in back-to-back -back weeks, so look out, here they come. I thought they might only get two wins on the entire split. They're already there, so maybe they finish with four? Is that, is that out of this world to finish with a four and 14 record? I think that's definitely doable. Uh, 
They do look a lot better. Lorlo looks pretty solid. I'm, I've been a little disappointed by Deftly. I thought he could legitimately win rookie of the split, but I mean, he has no chance now with how Licorice has been performing. And Deftly has actually been probably the biggest question mark on that Golden Guardian squad. Yeah, High has died a lot, but I mean, this is a guy who's willing to die for his team. And he still had some decent performances. We know he can play Oriana. So Deftly has been the most disappointing for uh, Golden Guardians. Overall, obviously, the main ones that stick out here are TSM and Echo Fox. We just had them swapped. That's all. They just swapped spots. Uh, it was a typo. We meant to put Echo Fox first and TSM sixth, of course. Uh, outside of that, I mean, nothing too crazy other than CLG being a lot lower than us as well as most people initially thought. But there's still time for that squad to uh, rebound. But I mean, man. There's a lot of teams performing better than we thought, and there's going to be probably three teams that miss out on playoffs that are teams that maybe deserve a playoff spot, but there's only six spots. There's going to be some good teams on the outside looking in come playoff time in the NALCS, but again, there's still four weeks to go, and uh, we'll be revisiting these preseason rankings at the end of the regular season to see uh, how accurate those predictions were coming in to this 2018 season, but until then, there's plenty of time for movement in both NA and EU. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.